Hello everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I'm going to talk about the six laws and specifically about the Qi Hong. Now the six laws are a system that is different than the San Yuan and different than the San He. Uh, but in the same sense, I mean, you can look at the San He of your house and the San Yuan analysis too. They don't negate each other, and this doesn't really either. However, if you find a person who is a real six law adherent, they're going to say the six laws is right and, and uh, flying stars is wrong. I don't believe that. I think they can work together. I don't see why they cannot work together. But the, the six laws basically include these six, six uh items. So it is a Xuan Kong system and that means it uh, uses the two cycle eight period system or the calendar and there's extra bits associated with this but they're not terribly important. Uh, then there's the Qi Hong which literally means female and male. Uh, now the Can Cantonese pronunci pronunciation of this is Qi Hong. And I'm going to use that because I can say that much easier than the Mandarin pronunciation. And I'm not even sure about that one. But if you want to look it up, you want to enter it like in, in this, unless you can write the Chinese characters, because this is the, uh, the pinyin, which is the Mandarin romanization of these two characters. And you won't find it under Qi Hong. It won't be there. Uh, there's also the leaning stars, and uh, this this video will be about Qi Hong, and I do have another video about the leaning stars, which is a different type of star chart. Uh, this also involves the golden dragon and the mountain and water castle gates. Now, these are not the regular castle gate with the flying stars. They're different. And then there is also the Grand Duke, and basically it's an expanded version of the more standard Grand Duke. So the Grand Duke is determined by the animal sign of the year. This expanded one uses the entire Batsa of the year and analyzes it like it's a person. So there's clashes and combinations and all this kind of stuff. I have not seen this really used. And even they, the, the, even the, this expanded version does acknowledge that the most important Grand Duke is the year animal sign. So you can just use that. Now I have talked about Shren Kong before. Uh, I've also talked about and have a video on Golden Dragon and uh, the two uh, mountain and water castle gates. Uh, and I've talked about the Grand Duke many times. It's only the, the standard Grand Duke, but it's good enough. This is what I'm going to concentrate on this video. And it's basically simply a balance of female and male. That's all that it is. Now, this involves two general pieces. One is if you have uh, a locked chi mouth, you want to see a mountain opposite it. And what is opposite is measured from the center of your house. Uh, the connection between the locked qi mouth and your main door is the second part of this qi hong system. And they're, they're both important. Uh, this, if you have this, you're good. If you have both, you're even better. Now, you can also, once you found that you do get qi from the locked qi mouth into your main door, then you can actually treat it a lot like qi flow uh, in, in the uh, flying star system. You can look then from your main door to a room door and then from a room door to an important object in the room. And a lot of them look at the desk, the bed, and the range. For me, I only would be concerned about the desk. The bed and the range have other considerations that I think are more important like the range being in a non-animal sign. That I think is more important. And also having your bed, having the headboard face one of your good directions 
and having against a solid wall is more important than trying to tap into this. Uh, it certainly doesn't hurt, but that's only if you can meet those requirements, you know, the other requirements I just talked about. And then if you also have the luck of having it also receiving the energy, that's even better. But I would be worried about the other concerns more than this type of chi flow. If you Google Chi Hong by using these words, uh, you can get a lot of different websites. And honestly, the the concepts and the names and, and these can be quite mixed up in English. In Chinese, it's a lot clearer. But uh, I don't read Chinese um, more than a little bit. And uh, so I do rely on English language sites. Uh, but the feng shui.com and David Yek's particular subject about this um, is, is pretty good. It does give you a decent overview of the subject. Also, the Feng Shui Expose YouTube channel has uh, a playlist called The Six Laws, but then it also has a list. I don't know if they have a separate playlist, but it will have XK, 6M, and then and then a colon or semicolon, whichever one it is, two dots, and then it'll give a topic. Anything with this is good. This actually explains in quite thoroughly the discussion on the six laws, all of the six laws, if you're really interested in understanding it. I'm going to give you some shortcuts so that you don't have to understand all the details. And that's the good thing, is the practical application is a lot more straightforward than trying to understand all this. So this is the Chi Hong chart. It doesn't look like any other chart. There are uh, the outer ring, the mo outermost ring is called the parent ring. The second ring is called the child ring. And th this is aligned with the 24 mountains. So this is North 1, North 2, North 3, and so forth. I've given them the names that uh, is associated with them and not just North 1, North 2, and so forth. But uh, this is quite standard. And then we have the later heavens, Bakwa. The numbers on these trigrams, which are really called guas, uh, they are associated with the location of the guas in the later heavens, Bakwa. So this one, the one here, you can see that it's the same gua. The heavens gua is the same here. And this is just, just how these numbers are assigned. Now, these numbers are also important in the leaning stars, but that's a separate video. If you look closely, you will see that Opposite ones on either the parent ring or the child ring, uh, they are opposite one another and have opposite polarity. So this uh, three, the gua with the three solid lines, this is pure male, which is like the father. The three broken lines, pure yin or pure female. So this is the mother and these are the children. Now the children do have a gender. I don't know which one's which but it doesn't matter because you're just looking for, for opposites. But here we have the three solid, three broken, opposite one another. We have the broken, solid, broken, and then we have the solid, broken, solid, and they're opposite one another. The guas are opposite. Now, if we look at these two, they're opposite. Again, their guas are also opposite. And you're always looking from the outside in. That's how you read the guas. And then the last set is here between the three and the four. And again, they're opposite. And this is how you're balancing the male and female, or the yin and yang, if you prefer. Now, if you want a clearer image of that chart, uh, you can get one in Chinese. I haven't seen one in English, uh, but uh, it's... You don't really need it, but if you really want to have one, you can get it here. The chart is the same for all residences, all businesses, 
all buildings. There is no period to be concerned about either. So it's very, very different than the flying stars. You do have to properly align the north, which is the center of the rat, with the true north of your house. But any standard 24 mountain chart can be used to determine this relevant information as this Chi Hong chart is aligned completely with the 24 mountains. And you can get a 24 mountains chart from me to print on a transparency by emailing me. Now, the Chi Hong, the whole idea here beyond the mountain and locked Chi mouth being opposite one another is that you're trying to link one important feature to another important feature through the guas, and they need to be opposite in polarity. So the, the again, the three, well, actually the four ways, the one is the locked Chi mouth and uh, the mountain opposite one another. Then you have the Chi mouth trying to link that to the main door sector, actually it's a subsector, and then the main door to the room door. These all use the center of the house as the center of your 24 mountain chart or the Chi Hong chart. Then once you go down to a single room, then you use the center of the room. And I would only worry about the office door and the desk. And this can work at home or at work. The Important features basically have two different categories and they are stepped down just like when you look at chi flow in a house. Uh, first off, the first key thing is that chi mouth and it needs to be locked. Uh, does it have a link to the main door? This is the most important connection. If you don't have this connection, the rest of this is irrelevant. It doesn't work. But if you do have it, then you can look at the main door to the room door and then the room door to, let's say, a desk um, or a, the most important thing. And I talked about uh, the, the range in the bed in, on another slide. So what you're looking for is these type of combos, the heaven and earth, which only occurs on the parent ring. And then you have the fire and water, the wind and thunder and the mountain and river. These only occur on the child ring. Here's where it gets easy. So this is the chi source sector and you start with the external chi source and I, or chi mouth and I have a separate video about chi mouths. And then, and then you look to see where your sector where your main door is located. That's the very first step, but it's the chi source and the connecting sector. So you might notice that the south two and the southwest three have two different rows. And that's because one is connected through the parent ring and the other is connected through the child ring. And that's the same. This is parent, this is child. So this is uh, pretty simple. Um, and you can take a screenshot because unless you already know exactly where your chi source is, uh, you, you're probably going to need all of these tables. This is for the west and the northwest. And again, you can take a screenshot. This is for the north and the northeast. And I'll give you a little time to take a screenshot. And then this is for the east and southeast. So that's all the subsectors. And now I'm going to give you an example of how you would use this. So let's say you have the condition, and I've kind of shrunken everything down, but you have a building, and you found the center of the building, and you place your 24 mountains ring on top of it, and you find your chi source, which is this chi mouth. Now, we're assuming that this is lower than the main door because that's one of the requirements. But once you've found it, you, it's the center of this intersection if you're talking about roads. And it's also the center of where two rivers may join. And that is discussed more in the, the, 
the Chi Mouth video. And this, is, you look, which, you know, you extend the lines and you see that this happens to be in Southwest 2. It's a little hard to see, but I think you can tell this is Southwest 2. So this is your Chi source. This is your locked Chi Mouth because we're assuming we have buildings here on these corners too. And we see, okay, do you have a main door here? Well, this one main door is in South one, it qualifies. So this is a mountain and river type of link. The strongest is the heaven and earth, but any one of the child rings is also good. And in this case, this doesn't have the option for a parent ring because Southwest two only has a child ring possible. If this is the condition, you know that the chi from this chi mouth does get into this building. And that's the most important thing. If this fails, if let's say the door, the main door was located somewhere in the southeast or south two or south uh, three, then no, you would not have a link and you wouldn't have the energy getting in to the building. So you might consider moving the door. Now, if, again, if the chi mouth is not connected to the main door through this link, you, you're not receiving chi from the chi mouth. And so you can stop at this point unless you can move the door. Let's say we, we're in this good situation where we know we get in chi into this, uh, into the main door. Now, let's say this is a house and you have a home office here in this corner and, and you find where your door is. Well, it could be in any one of these sectors, but it, if it's here, it works. If it's in West one, Southwest three or Southwest one, it would not work. The door must be located in this subsector. And uh, and, and you might have to move the door. And of course, an interior door is a lot easier to move, but it can't be in any of these other sectors because you're measuring from the center of the house. You're still measuring from the center of the house. So, you know, here is uh, North One. Well, the room isn't even in North One, so the door can't be there. Same with East Three. Same with Southeast One. The only place it can be here is in Southwest 2. So now you notice that the door was the connecting sector in the last one, but now it's the chi source. Just like when you flow energy through a, a building in the Flying Stars. If this were an office building, and it was, let's say it was set up basically like this, the main door is still here, and we're assuming it's the same set up and so it's getting chi. These four rooms receive chi, the really good chi from the chi mouth. These five rooms do not. So this can help you choose a room or a office within an office building if you have the ability to choose. I mean, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, but you still have to start at the chi mouth and see whether or not it makes it into the main door of the office building before you can go to this step. Once you're down to the room, now we have to change the center of focus. Now it becomes the center of the room. And this oftentimes will change which sector your main door, or I mean the room door is in. Before it was in Southwest two, now it is in Northeast three. And that's because we have a different center point. And this one actually has the ability to have the strongest heaven and earth and and a slightly less strong wind and thunder. And these are the two sectors that are practical. You have two more sectors, but it would be very hard to put a desk here. And really the green area is where you want your chair to be. This is uh, this is a, in respect to the room, this is a three foot door or a one meter door. And that is about the size of your desk and chair together. So 
uh, if this is in an office building, you want to pretty much face the door. So if you have your chair here and you have your desk here, people would be walking right into your desk and that's very uncomfortable for both you and them. Uh, if you have the chair here, your desk would probably not allow the door to even open. So these two don't work physically, but these two sectors do. And uh, if you are, if you were a, um, you could be in either one and have your desk position in a good direction for you. If you're a East Group person, you could be in either one of these sections with your desk pointing to the north, because that's a good direction for you. That is, when you sit at the desk, you're looking north. And that's basically towards the door. If you are a West Group person, you're pretty much restricted to being here looking northeast. But if this is a house, it's not so important. You don't have to face the door. That's mostly for an office uh, in an office building. So again, the very best, the fullest form of the Chi Hong has a Lak Chi mouth and a mountain opposite one another and has a link between the Lak Chi mouth and the main door of the building. That gives you as much energy as you can possibly get from the six laws. The, I'll give you a quick example. If you had a Lak Chi mouth in Southeast 3 and your main door is on one of these sectors and that comes from the tables that I've given you and you have a mountain which could include hill or higher ground in Northwest 3, you have the fullest form. Now, if you have an activated seven star robbery formation, you have to be a little careful. If to be able to receive the, the Chi Hong energy, you would need to move your main door because it's not in the right place. You want to be careful that you do not destroy your seven star robbery formation because there your main door must be located in the sector where you have double stars. And you do not want to move that away. And part of the reason is it's very hard to activate the seven star robbery. But also if something were to happen, let's say it's a bridge that creates your locked uh, chi mouth or maybe it's buildings. If something happens to that building or that bridge and it's destroyed, then if you've also destroyed your seven star robbery, your, your building has nothing and nothing really good about it. If you, have, if you do not have an activated or activatable seven star robbery formation, you may consider moving your main door and it's actually desirable if it's feasible. That is if you can afford it and you own the place and it's not a, an apartment or a condo where you probably cannot move your door, then it's probably worth it. If you have a combo 10, a parent string or a pearl string house that's activated, you don't have to worry about moving your main door. There is no real restrictions with the main door. Those have other conditions. Now you do want to avoid moving your main door when either the current location or the new location has an annual affliction unless you can do it within the sun and moon arrival dates. And that's pretty standard. I think people should know that, but I thought I'd remind you. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me here if you have any questions or visit my ad-free website. I will be having regular videos uh, monthly and occasionally new videos like this, including some new ones on the Sanher a bit later in the year. Thank you again for watching.